so hello and welcome to today's lesson so in today's lesson we are going to derive the cauchy riemann equation in polar form so we we'll derive the cauchy riemann equations in polar form so before you can really understand this you have to know how to derive the cauchy riemann equation itself and we did that in our previous video so if you don't really have that understanding you can go into the playlist of this video and watch that one before watching this so the couch riemann equations in the polar form for u and v are given by these two equations we have here All right so this has been stated for us but how do we derive it how do we show that it is true that is what we are going to go through so how do we derive this that's the question okay so you should know that um when you have a complex number <laughs> z is equal to x plus i y right so in polar form this r is we can write it as r cos theta and our y can be written as r sine theta so that's the substitution we'll be making here so we are going to make that substitution so we set x to be equal to r cos theta and we also let y to be equal to r sine theta so we just change it to the polar form so here when it comes you know that we have two functions here at least we can say x here is a function of r and theta and y here is also a function of r and theta so what we're going to do is that we are going to take partial derivatives of the when you come here of x with respect to r and theta all right so you know this is the function for x x is equal to r cos theta so we are going to differentiate x partially with respect to r and respect to theta so when you do it with respect to r, we are going to get cos theta. And when we do it with respect to theta, we are going to get negative r sine theta. Then we move on to our y. So with y, we have y equals r sine theta. And in that one, we are going to differentiate it partially with respect to r and theta. So when we do it with respect to theta, m s r, we get this. And with respect to theta, we have this so these these are the first steps in deriving our Cauchy-Riemann equations in the polar form and I hope it's very understandable up to this point All right so don't forget that u is a function of x and y and v is also a function of x and y and x itself is a function of r and theta and y is also a function of r and theta so we are going to use chain rule right so we are going to use chain rule and there is a comment here it says note that u and v are all functions of x and y so apply the chain rule first to our u we would like to differentiate u partially with respect to r so applying this we will have this here right so which involves our chain rule so from here so from using the chain rule, we get this equation here then from here we can see that we already was we already know what the x the r is and the y, y the r is so you can see that the x the r is cos theta and the y the r is sine theta so we are going to make substitutions so in the make substitution in place of this we have cos theta and in place of this we have sine theta so now we name this equation one as you can see here <coughs> but from our previous video from the Kaltriemann equation were given by these two here right and you can see that del u del x is the same as del v del y 
and del u del y is the same as negative del v and del x. So we are going to make substitution into equation 1. So that means wherever you find del u del x, we replace it with this. Wherever you find del u del y, we also replace it with this. So now making that substitution gives us what we have here. I hope you can see that. We just substituted what we said we we're going to substitute. So when you get here, then what we do is that we try to do some creation and destroying here. So we multiply through by r and also divide through by r. So we multiply through by r and divide through by r as well. So we multiply through by r. So that way I can see this r here. And know that here negative can't fit because we've interchanged. We've brought this first and we've brought this second. We've interchanged the position. So we've multiplied through by r and we've divided through by r. So that's what gives us the equation too. I hope that's understandable. Alright, so when you get here, then note that from the partial derivative that we found here. So the partial derivative that we found here. Okay. I hope you've observed it. Alright, so let's go back to where we've got into. So from those partial derivatives we know that negative r sine theta was del x del theta and r cos theta was del y del theta. So we are going to make substitution into this particular equation here. So that means wherever you find r cos theta, we will put this in. Wherever you find negative r sine theta, so we will put this inside. So let's go on. So, making substitution is going to give us, so when you make substitution, we are going to have del u del r will be equal to 1 over r, then we have del v and del x times del x del theta, this is because negative r sine theta is the same as del x del theta, then plus del v and del y times del y del theta. I hope you understand because of what we have here. So when you make substitution, this is what we get. Okay, let me take this off. Okay. So when it comes here you can see that uh del x here cancels the del x and now del y here cancels this del y. So you're going to have del v over del theta plus del v over del theta which is the same as del v over del theta and this happens to be the first equation and you've been able to derive that. So you've been able to derive the first equation. So you can see that here. So this is the first equation and we've derived that. So now let's go to how to derive the second equation. So we are going to follow a similar approach. So that's the first equation for the Cauchy Riemann equation in the polar form. Now on the second equation. So with that one, we are going to use the chain rule. Okay, so using the chain rule, we are going to have this particular equation here. Then, note from the partial derivatives we found earlier that del x del theta was equal to negative r sine theta and del y del theta was equal to r cos theta. So we are going to make substitution. So we are going to substitute this and also substitute this. So when you make the substitution, then we are going to get del u del theta will be equal to negative r del u del x sine theta, then plus r del u del y cos theta. I hope you get that. All right. Then from here, to know that from the Couch-Riemann equations, del u del x is the same as del v and del y. And del u del y is the same as negative del v and del x. So we are going to make substitution. So that means wherever you find del u del x, we are going to put this in. And wherever you find del u del y, we are going to put this in. And so making a substitution gives us what we have here. I hope you understand. So we can decide to um, bring the negative r out.
So when we do that, we are going to end up with this equation 3 here. But also, note from the partial derivatives that we found at the early stages that the y del r was equal to sine theta and del x del r was equal to cos theta right so let me show you in case you've forgotten so this place you've been using it a lot so sine theta is equal to del y del r and cos theta is equal to del x del r so we are going to make that substitution so that means that wherever you find cos theta we will put this in where you find sine theta we will also put this in so making a substitution gives us the u del theta is equal to negative r then the v del r times the y del r then plus whatever we have there so you can see this can cancel this and this can cancel this we are going to end up with the v del r plus the v del r which is the same as the v del r and this happens to be the second Kalachiman equation in the polar form. So hence we get these two and we've been able to derive that. So in case you had any difficulties understanding what we've done, I would advise you go back and play the video and try to reason along. You realize that it takes time but it's very simple to understand. So now let's take an example. Let's solve an example with what we've done so far. So we have a question which says check that for any integer m. So the functions this u and this v satisfy the Kalachiman equations. And you should know that if it satisfies the Kalachiman equations, then it means it is analytic. Okay. So with the solution, write down our u and write down our v. So we have to know the Kalachiman equation in the polar form. So I've quoted it here, these two equations. So the next thing that we have to do is to find the partial derivatives of our u and our v. So this is our u. u is equal to rm. r is the power m. Then cos, the argument of the cos is m theta. So when you find the partial derivative of u with respect to r, you're going to have this. And when you find it with respect to theta, you're going to have that. Then we now go on to our v. So this is our v. When you find the partial derivative of the v with respect to r, we have this. And the v with respect to theta, we have that. So now, we are done finding our partial derivatives. The next thing for us to do is to check if del u del r is equal to 1 over r del v del theta. So from the partial derivative that we found, this was a representation of del u del r and this was for del v del theta. So you can see that when you multiply it by the 1 over r, this, we, this reduces to this, which is the same as that. So that means that the first Kalachiman equation is satisfied. So take a look at it again, you, you will get it. So now let's go to the second one. So with the second one, we ask ourselves that is del u del theta equal to negative r del v del r. So from the partial derivative that we found, you know, this was our del u del theta. And this was our del v del r, right? So you could see that when you multiply this r true, this r here is going to take the minus 1 here away indices okay so we're going to have this which is the same as that and you can see that the second Kalachiman equation is also satisfied so that means that the functions u and v which was given to us in the questions satisfy the Kalachiman equation hence the given function is also analytic okay so <coughs> thank you very much for following if you didn't get anything as i say you can always go back and play the video for you to understand so on our next lesson we are going to talk about harmonic functions and the harmonic conjugates right so 
and how many conjugates. So thank you very much. Um, we do kind of a final year student of mathematics at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. It has always been a joy learning with you. Thank you.